Goku was the first to wake up from their little nap when he heard someone knocking on the door. He was a little reluctant to get up though. One reason was that this bed was the most comfortable mattress he's ever slept on. The other was because Wanda's arms still entangled around his body as they slept. As much as he didn't want to disturb their rest, Goku knew they had to get up now and meet Thor in the dining hall. He carefully removed her arms from around him and left the bed to answer the door. Lady Sif. Hello young Goku. Thor asked me to come get you and your friend. Goku. Thanks, Miss Sif. Let me wake her up first and we'll quickly join you. Sif nodded before she closed the door and waited outside. Goku walked back to the bed and gently shook Wanda's shoulders. Wanda? Him period? Goku? Is it time to eat already? Goku? Yeah. She up and rubbed the sleep out of her eyes. Wanda? Well, that was a nice nap. The young warrior smiled before he and his girlfriend got ready. And they leave the room. Lady Sif was still patiently waiting outside and gave them a friendly nod when they stepped out. She led the way to the dining hall, where they could see Thor and the warriors three already eating away at the front of the long table. Thor, welcome back, young Rogers. I trust you and Lady Wanda rested well. Goku nods as he sat next to Thor. Goku, yeah, the bed was so comfortable. It made me feel like I was sleeping on a cloud. Thor, chuckles well. I'm glad it's to your satisfaction. You should all eat. As soon as your hunger is sated, we shall give you a tour of the city. Goku and Wanda grabbed their plates and selected their food from the variety of delectable dishes on the table. He could recognize the fruit and bread but the other foods were a mystery to him. Not wanting to miss out on anything. The young warrior put a little bit of everything he could see onto his plate. Wanda had already begun to eat and he quickly dug in as well. Thor's friends look on in shock at the amount of food Goku's eating. He has almost or more than 50 meals, and he's eating them with quick speed that rivals even Thor. Wanda and Thor are not all surprised by the amount of food Goku's eating, since they knew about his high metabolism, though still shocked by the number of meals Goku's eating. Sif watched Goku eat with a fond smile on her face. Thor was not joking when he said Goku had an appetite that almost rivaled Volstag's. Fortunately, his table manners were much better than her longtime friends. Volstag, usually just gorged on everything at a frightening speed. She always wondered how it was he never once choked on his food with the way he ate. Though if she knew Goku's manners before he was adopted by Steve, then she can see that his manners were not all different if not worse than Volstag. She poured some orange juice and offered Goku the cup. Sif, here, drink this to help wash the food down. Goku smiles and in thanks before he accepted the cup and took a long sip. Thor just looked at Lady Sif and grinned it was nice to see her caring nature in action. She rarely showed it, but it seems the boy with a tail had inspired a bit of her maternal instincts to come forth. Wanda? So what are we doing today? Thor, Lady Sif, and I will show you all around our fair city. I believe the best place to start is in the north quadrant of Asgard. Goku, sounds cool. Can't wait to see the city around. The four of them got up from the table and began to leave. The warriors three remained where they were Volstag kept eating while Hogan and Fandral were sipping away at their drinks. Hogan, perhaps if our patrols are finished, we will join you later. Thor nodded before he and Lady Sif led the way out of the palace. Wanda held Goku's hand as they walked together through the streets. A few of the Asgardians passed by respectfully bowed their heads for their prince before they continued on their way. Both couldn't hide their awe as they marveled at how beautiful the city looked. The first place they stopped at was inside a very tall tower. When they walked in, there were many Asgardians scattered all over the room, studying large ancient books written in a strange text, while some of them were doing strange hand gestures. Sif. This is where our people come to learn the basics of casting spells, and magic this gained Wanda's interested as a part of every Asgardian warrior's training, but there are some who show a talent for spell casting, and they choose to study more advanced magic. Wanda? What kind of magic do they learn here? Sif. We learn how to cast simple illusions, materialization spells, shapa shifting, and basic healing spells. Wanda nodded, thinking about whether or not to learn some Asgardian magic for herself. She could do many things with her powers, but healing wasn't one of them. If she could learn the basics of how healing magic works, it would be useful in the future should Goku or any of the other Avengers get injured in the field. Goku, looks at Thor you able to use spells Thor? Thor? No at least not very well. I was too brash as a child, and did not have the patience to learn magic. My mother was very good with magic though perhaps more, so than my father. It was she who taught Loki everything he knew about being a spellcaster. Sif. If he had kept up with his training, 
It would have saved us a lot of trouble when we were younger. There was this one time when Loki turned Thor into a frog, and it took us a week to find him before Lady Frigga finally broke the spell. Goku and Wanda burst out in laughter, as they tried to picture the powerful god of thunder being a frog. Thor glared at Lady Sif for telling them that story. It was an embarrassing part of his past that he would have preferred to be kept secret. Sif shrugged with a playful grin on her face in response. Wanda. Still laughing a eh, frog? Did he have to eat flies for a week too? Sif. Nods, I don't know if he ate them for a week, but I did see Thor snatching up flies with his tongue a few times. Goku. Oh man. That was funny. Sif. By the way Goku. What was that magical ball you created when Fandral was teasing Wanda? Goku. Magical ball? Who you mean Ki? You see Ki is a power you hold from within. It takes years for a normal person on earth to master it. But I mastered it in one day. Sif. Is it somewhat like magic? Goku. Well, yes, and no. It basically the flow of your entire being. Thor. Not to mention that fiery power you awakened during our fight with Ultron. Goku. That too. And I still couldn't figure out why I have that power. This gained Sif's interest. Sif, red fiery power? Thor. Let us head to the next place. There is much more to see in Asgard. Later. The two Asgardians took them to a variety of different places. The first area they came to after the Asgardian Learning Hall of Magic was the local marketplace, where their people shopped for daily goods and services. It wasn't all that different from some of the marketplaces on Earth to be honest, except for the fact that there were also blacksmith vendors here, who sold a variety of exotic swords, axes, and bows. After that, Lady Sif and Thor led them to a more quieter area of the city. They asked them to talk in a low voice before entering one of the many great libraries in Asgard. Wanda and Goku were amazed by the design and sheer size of the building it was like a slightly smaller version of the palace. Later, they continued to the next place. Along the way many women were giving Thor some obvious appreciative glances. It seemed like this was something the God of Thunder was already used to though, and Lady Sif for that matter. She just rolled her eyes at all the women who were trying to get her secret paramour to look at them, and simply walked closer beside Thor. Her annoyance quickly turned to amusement, though when she and Thor noticed a few of the younger girls, and even some of the older women were checking Goku out too. Goku saw them looking at him, though didn't understand why so for being polite. He smiles and waves hello to them. Being naive, he was confused by the way the Asgardian women were eyeing him some with a small predatory smile on their faces. Wanda saw it too, and she glared at some of the women before she hugged Goku tightly. Goku can feel her chest pressed against his head as he blushed a bit. Lady Sif chuckled at the cute look of awkwardness on Goku's face. Her pace quickened so they could get away from the people faster. Thor struggled to catch up with her for a moment as they walked towards what looked like a large training field. Goku's eyes sparkled at the very side of the field. There were a few Asgardians doing combat drills. Some were sparring in hand-to-hand -hand combat while others were swinging staffs and swords made of wood at each other. The edge and ends of the staffs and swords were wrapped in thin leather, presumably, so they wouldn't cause major injuries if it hit the other person. Sif glanced at Wanda more specifically her attire and suddenly got an idea. Sif, Thor, why don't you take Goku and train with him for a bit? There's something I'd like to show Lady Wanda. The God of Thunder had a look of confusion and intrigue on his face, as did the Scarlet Witch. Thor. Where are you taking her? Sif. It's a secret. We'll meet up later back at the palace. She then motions the young lady to follow. She looks at Goku as he gave a nod to her to go with Sif. Goku, go ahead. I'll catch up with you two later. Wanda smiles and pecks a kiss on his cheek she left with Sif. Thor and Goku walk to a weapons rack that held many wooden swords and staffs. Thor. Pick one, young Rogers. Let us see how well you can fight. Goku. I'll use my power pole. It's also made out of wood. Thor nods as he grabs a staff before he stepped out to the middle of the field. The young warrior followed and stood ready in a battle stance. Goku, ready when you are. Thor, let us begin then. The god of thunder suddenly swung his staff from the right. Goku blocks it and stood his ground. Thor tried to push him back, but Goku didn't move. Goku gave a push to Thor before going for a swing. Thor managed to block it, but didn't expect Goku to jump and hit a kick to his head. He sent him back and hits a swing on his chest, making Thor wheeze, as he didn't expect the pull to be very hard. Goku steps back and went for another, but the God of Thunder recovered quickly enough to block the attack by raising his staff above his head. He drove his right fist into his abdomen, but Goku caught his fist just in time. Goku then trips him with a sweep and aims his staff at Thor's face. 
Thor jumps up, and the two exchange strikes and swings. Goku was more agile and quick with his staff as he gave Thor a hard time to even hit him. Soon, Goku ends this with a quick block, spins his power pole, knocking Thor's staff of his hands, and hits it away from his reach. He raised his staff, and spins it before posing with it. Thor, well done, young Rogers. It seems you're more skilled with a staff than I am. Goku, my grandfather taught me how to use it. I later mastered it. Thor nods and raised his hand. Mjolnir came flying all the way from the palace into his palm. The God of Thunder swung it around a few times before he held it out for Goku. Thor, take it, I think it's time to show you how to wield Mjolnir. Goku, are you sure? Thor, I don't see why not. You've already proven yourself to be able to lift the hammer. It'd be wise for you to learn how to use it too. Goku felt a little uncertain, but he wrapped his fingers around the leather grip of Mjolnir nonetheless. Thor, now throw it in any direction, and wait a few moments before you hold out your hand. The hammer should come back to you. Goku nodded and took a deep breath before he threw Mjolnir to the sky on the left. The hammer rocketed through the air as it quickly faded into the distance. After a moment passed, he held his hand out and waited for the powerful weapon to return. It took a few seconds, but Mjolnir soon came rushing back to his hand. Goku looked at the hammer in slight awe before he turned to give it back to the God of Thunder. There was a pleased smile on Thor's face as he shook his head. Thor, no hold on to Mjolnir. There is much more for you to learn when it comes to wielding it. Goku, okay, but it's still yours, okay? Thor, of course. After this, I'm going to give you a gift that will surely gain your interest. Goku was surprised by this. A gift? Goku, you shouldn't have to Thor. I'm not that special. Thor, don't say that young Rogers. You're a special young man that has a big heart and a pure soul. It's the least I can do to congratulate for being the first mortal to ever wield Mjolnir. Goku, sighs okay. I accept. Later, Goku held Mjolnir in his hand as he made his way back to the palace. True to his word, Thor had showed him how to wield Mjolnir as a weapon both offensively and defensively. One of them was a technique he often employed in battle. By spinning his hammer at rapid speeds to the ground, Thor was able to unleash torrential waves of dirt or sometimes ice when it came to Jotunheim at the enemy to disorient them. The God of Thunder asked him to try it for himself after he demonstrated how it worked. Goku nodded and spun Mjolnir rapidly before he lowered it to the ground. Unfortunately, Thor had forgotten to get out of the way, and he was soon blasted by a huge amount of dirt. The poor God of Thunder was completely covered in earth and sand from head to toe. Goku kept apologizing while doing his best to hold back his laughter. Thor, it is alright, warrior with a tail. I should go and clean myself up before dinner. Think you can get back to the palace on your own? It's just straight down this road. Goku, sure, but what about this? Holds the hammer. Thor, hold on to it for now. I think it'll be good for you to get more acquainted with Mjolnir. I'll meet you at the palace. Thor flew off towards the palace with bits of dirt and sand dropping away from his body as he rushed through the air. Goku looks at the hammer with admiration. He ran his fingers across the edges despite, having been used in battle for thousands of years, there didn't seem to be any scratches or dents on the weapon at all. There were intricate carvings etched along the sides of the hammer. Goku had no idea what they meant though maybe later he would ask Thor about them. Goku, I wonder how much power can this give me? Goku then powers up as he makes Mjolnir charge up its own, seeing if its power can go through him. Suddenly, a burst of aura and electricity came out from his body as his hair stood up. Goku, whoa, I didn't expect this much. It's really amazing how this hammer can possess this much power. He powers down as his hair goes back to normal, and he makes his way back to the palace. What he didn't know, is that his power boost gained the attention of someone. Somewhere away from Asgard, in a dark region far from Asgard, stood a figure in the middle of nowhere, doing nothing but thinking. Suddenly, it felt a burst of power that came from Asgard, which piqued its interest. The power is beyond anything it felt in years. Stronger than Thor and Loki combined. In its mind, she sees Goku standing there with Mjolnir in his arms. Something about him made it feel craved. It might from the looks of the young warrior, or his immense power. It doesn't know why but she wants him. Colin, aren't you such an adorable little mortal? But with a power like yours, you'll be a great follower for me. Not only a follower but something far more than that. Don't worry, little one. We'll be seeing each other soon. And when that time comes, I'll make you mine. Mine, and mine alone. No one will have you but me the goddess of death. 